everyone today we are going to look at the January 2020 chemistry paper one all right so let us begin one property of ionic compounds is that they a contain molecules B are solids and vaporize easily C usually dissolve in organic solvents or D conduct electricity when molten or dissolved in water and that is true based on the options there this one is best fitted for the ionic compounds property question two which of the following processes does not provide evidence in support of the particulate nature of matter does not support its filtration which is a separation technique all the others are in agreement with the particulate theory of matter in terms of movements and particles and so forth. Items 3 to 4 refer to the four sets of properties represented by the options A, B, C and D below. Question 3. Which set of properties above refers to a neutron? A neutron has a charge of 0 and it has a mass of 1. 0 and 1 says so between A and it's between B and D and since it has a mass of 1 the answer would be B question 4 which set of properties above refers to a proton a proton has a charge of plus 1 and a mass of 1 so 3 is B and 4 would be question 4 would be A Question 5. Sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than ethanoic acid, which is vinegar, in aqueous solution because sulfuric acid is A. More corrosive than ethanoic acid. B. Is more concentrated than ethanoic acid. C. Ionizes to a greater extent than ethanoic acid. Or D. Causes sugar to char, whereas ethanoic acid does so would be C, strong acid fully dissociate in solution while weak acid partially dissociate in solution. Question 6. Which of the substances represented by the options A, B, C and D in the following table is most likely sodium chloride? Sodium chloride is an ionic compound we, and for ionic compound because of the the, the attraction between the positive ion and the negative ion the bond between them is very very strong which means that it requires a great amount of energy to break those bonds so that would have a high melting point and it would also have a high boiling point so let us see which one would be sodium chloride a high enough melting point boiling point conduct electricity in the solid state no sodium chloride doesn't conduct electricity in the solid state it does that in the aqueous state but let us look at this other one at C where we have a high boiling point but it is saying that it conducts electricity in the solid state so that is not sodium chloride so the answer would be A more than, more, most likely C is graphite question 7 Isotopes of an element contain A. Different number, different numbers of protons. B. The same number of neutrons. C. The same number of electrons as neutrons. Or D. The same number of protons as electrons. Isotopes. For example, you have protium and deuterium. See, they have the same proton number, the same element, but different neutron numbers. So the best answer here would be the same number of protons as electrons, and that's D. Question 8. What mass of oxygen atoms contains the same number of moles as 112 grams of sulfur atoms? Alright, so we can approach this in this way. First, we need to find the moles of the 112 grams of sulfur and then 
from that we compare it to find the modes of the, ox the oxygen atom and that with, the, with that particular number of moles. So first, the moles of sulfur, remember that moles is the mass over the RMM. In this case, it's the RAM because it's the sulfur atom. So that's equal to, that is equal to the 112 grams over 32 grams, 132 grams per mole. Grams cancel grams, so the answer will be in moles equal to 32 into 112, that is 64, that's 3.5 moles, moles of sulfur atoms, okay? So we want to know what mass 3.5 moles of oxygen atom would produce because the question says what mass of oxygen atom contains the same number of moles as 12 grams of sulfur. So we want to know it, since one mole of, the, of oxygen atom, one mole of oxygen atom equal to 16 grams. So if you, if you were to look inside the oxygen atom one mole of oxygen atom you will see 16 grams so we want to know 3.5 moles would give us what grams oxygen would equal to what grams we don't know so we call that x rearrange the equation x equal to 16 grams multiplied by 3.5 moles divide by one mole Moles cancel mole, the answer will be in gram. So 3.5 multiplied by 16, so that is 16, 3 is 48, half of 16 is 8, so that's 56. So that's 56 grams, which is C. Okay? Question 9 Two solutions are to be mixed in order to demonstrate endothermic change. Which of the following techniques would be most appropriate? We have seen this question before and we know that it is B, taking the temperature readings. Question 10. An element X has an electronic configuration of 281. At which of the following position is the element in the periodic table? 281 indicate that it is in group 1 and there are one, two, three numbers within the electronic configuration. So that is period three, three. So the number of, the numbers, the total numbers within the electronic configuration indicate the period that the element is in and the valence electron or electrons indicate the group that the element is in. So it is period three, group one. Period 3 group 1, so that's D, which is sodium. Item 11 refers to the following equation, which represents the reaction between ethene and chlorine. Right? So 11 asks, asking what type of reaction do, does the equation above represent? It's an addition reaction. Right? Or addition halogenation so it's an addition reaction where the chlorine gas is added across the double bond break it to form the, the dichloroethane so that's a question 12 which of the following groups of mixtures is arranged arranged in order of increasing particle size in order of increasing particle size so you're starting from the smallest to the largest. So it is solution, then colloids, then suspension. And that would be solution, colloids, so C. 30. Ionic bond formation results from the A. Donation of electrons from a non-metal to a metal to achieve stability. Donation of electrons from a metal to a non-metal to achieve stability 
attraction between the positively charged ions of a metal and a pool of electrons. No. Sharing of electrons between the atoms of a metal and non-metal. No. So C and, C and D is clearly out of it. So is it donation of electrons from a non-metal to a metal? As A is suggested, no. It's the donation from a metal. The donation of the electrons from a metal to the non-metal. So that's the process of starting ionic bonding. Remember again, ionic bonding is the attraction between the ions. You have to first obtain the ions and then they attract each other. The negative charges will attract each other to create the bond, hence the name ionic bond. But to start that process, the metal would have to give up the electrons first. Question 14. An acid may be defined as a proton donor, a neutron donor, a proton acceptor, or a neutron acceptor. Alright, so an acid, of course, is defined as a proton donor, one of the definitions of an acid. Question 15. Ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol to form an ester and water. How many moles of ethanol? Sorry, how many moles of ethanoic acid are required to produce 0.5 mole of ester? So here we have the ethanoic acid reacti reacting with the with ethanol to form the ester and water. And they want to want to um, find out the number of moles of ethanoic acid required to produce 0.5 mole of ester. So the first thing you do is write the reaction. Ethanoic acid is CH3 COOH aqueous plus ethanol, which is C2H5 OH aqueous. And that gives uh, the ester, which is CH3 CO. O C two H five aqueous plus H two O so that and that's water. This right here is zero point five mole of, of for the ester. So we have zero point five mole here being produced. Now we are going to use the mole ratio for to to ensure that we. we we can determine the mole for the ethanoic acid but first let us check if the equation is balanced so here we have two four so this is four four so that's four carbon atoms over the reactant side and we have we also have four carbon atoms on the product side in the ester there are two, three, three oxygen atoms. Same here, we have one oxygen atom. So there are three oxygen atoms over this side. The hydrogen atoms now. Three, four, that's five. So there are five hydrogen atoms over the reactant. Well, five plus five, so that's 10. So that's 10 hydrogen atoms over the reactant side and how many we have over the product side so that's eight five and three eight and two ten so the equation is balanced as it, as it is so the mole ratio between the ester and the ethanoic acid is one to one so if 0 0.5 mole was produced that means the ethanoic acid must be 0 0.5 moles as well so the answer is b so that is how useful mole ratio can be when trying to determine the, the mass or the mole and you, or even the concentration of, uh, of a compound within the balance equation. Question 16. From which of the following substances can a solid be obtained by the process of sedimentation? And that would be suspension. Like pouring sand in a glass of water and have it um, suspended to the bottom 
Item 17 refers to the following graph, which shows the variation of the pH of the mixture formed when solution Y is added to a fixed volume of solution X. Right? 17 says, which of the following pairs of substances can represent solution X and Y? This graph right here represents an acid-base titration curve. And they are very distinctive. If you have the, if the base is the known, is the standard that you're using and the acid is the analyte, which is the unknown, then the curve will look like this S. If it's the other way around, where the acid is the standard and the base is the analyte, meaning that you want to determine the concentration of the base, right? Then the S will reverse. So the S will, would look something like this. I'm drawn to scale, but it will look something like a two. So for the base, if the base is being added to the acid, right? It looks like this S. If the acid is being added to the base, it looks like a two. Okay, let me say that again. If the base is being added to the acid during the titration, from the burette to the acid, then it looks like an S. If the acid is being added to the base from the burette to the acid, from the burette to the base in the, in the beaker, then it looks like a two. Okay? So, so because this is what this is the curve that was obtained the, that means the base is being added to the acid and so y would be the base right and y would be the base and x would be the acid so it is c so the answer is c all right. Question 18. Which of the following halogens is a liquid at room temperature? We know that bromine is the halogen that is a liquid at room temperature. Iodine is a solid. Fluorine and chlorine are both gases. A piece of metal, question 19, a piece of metal is reacted with an acid to, pro to produce hydrogen gas. Which of the following steps should be employed in order to increase the rate of reaction? One, is it increasing the temperature at which the reaction is carried out? Two, subdividing the piece of metal. Or three, reducing the concentration. So two of the factors that affect the rate of reaction is temperature, increasing the temperature, and also increasing the surface area. So if you subdivided the metal, you are increasing the surface area. So it would be one and two, and that would be A. Question 20. Which of the following properties increases across period three of the periodic table? Going, going from from sodium to, to argon, you are increasing the atomic number. So the atomic number is increasing going from sodium to argon. So the answer would be would be B. 21. Which of the following substances does not produce water? When reacted with acid? Is it the carbonates? Is it the metal oxide? Is it the active metal or the reactive metals? Or is it the metal hydroxide? All except C, the reactive metal. Remember, when metal react with acid, they produce the salt and hydrogen gas. So it is C. 20, items 22 to 23 refer to the following information. A piece of calcium was added to some distilled water in a container and the following observations were recorded. Bubbles of a gas evolved, a cloudy suspension was formed. 22. The gas produced is expected to relight a glowing splint, 
give a pop with a high with a lighted splint turn acidified aqueous potassium dichromate green or decolorized acidified aqueous potassium dichromate calcium was added to some distilled water which means that it is the calcium plus the calcium 2 plus ion plus the OH H plus and that would give calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas so the gas the hydrogen gas give a pop with the glowing splint sorry give a pop with the lighted splint 23 a sample of the suspension was filtered and the pH of the filtrate determined the expected pH of the filtrate should be approximately should be around 10 because it's a base so it should be, so it's anything greater than 7 24 which of the following salts is an acid salt acid salt contain hydrogen within it within the formula so it's A 25 sodium hydrogen carbonate and hydrochloric acid reacted to produce sodium chloride the mixture effervesced the effervescence is caused by the evolution of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the only gas that effervesces. okay 26 which of the following diagrams illustrate bonding in oxygen oxygen has six electrons on its outer shell and it needs two so and if one oxygen is combined with another oxygen then it should be a double bond so the answer is B see here you have the two two of the two of the electrons from one oxygen atom combined with another two electrons from the other oxygen atom to give a double bond each bond each two electrons represent uh, represents a bond okay so the answer is B 27 which of the following is the greatest form formula sorry 27 which of the following is the correct formula for ammonium carbonate ammonium ion is NH4 plus and the carbonate ion is CO3 2 minus switch them around you will get NH4 bracket 2 CO3 NH4 bracket 2 CO3 and that's C 28 which of the following products would be produced by the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid when dilute sulfuric acid dissociate you 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 will have the H plus ions from the acid and H, another H plus ion from water and, and that is at the cathode and at the anode you, you, you would see the SO4 2 minus ion and the hydroxide ion so at the cathode hydrogen gas is produced and at the anode given that hydroxide is below sulfur the sulfate ion in the electrochemical series then OH will be preferentially discharged and that produce oxygen so it's hydrogen gas at the cathode oxygen at the anode that's A 29 a solution of sodium hydroxide is neutralized by the addition of dilute hydrochloric acid the results obtained are used to plot a graph below here's the graph which of the points on the graph above represents the neutralization of the of the reaction all right so what this uh, experiment is about are this titration here because it's a titration you you would have the acid being added to the base and each time the acid or the base added to the acid the temperature is increased and you measure the temperature for each time you add a certain volume of acid right of, of base to the acid and the this the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is a neutralization reaction 
and it's also endo sorry it's also exothermic so we expect the temperature to increase now once the equivalence point is reached or once neutralization is achieved you will start to see a decrease in temperature meaning that there isn't anything there to anything further there to react with the, the, the reaction is over okay and so this point right here would be the neutralization point so that is B question 30 or rather item 30 refers to the following apparatus which is used to measure the relative conductivity of various substances if substances if substances containing one mole of a solute per dm cube are investigated which substance should cause the bulb to glow the brightest and the strongest acid right here or the sun's strongest electrolyte would be sulfuric acid that's it 31 when a piece of magnesium ribbon is burnt in air magnesium oxide is formed the magnesium oxide is then placed in water and tested with litmus solution which turns blue the above experiment shows that magnesium oxide is basic that's D 32 when a metal sorry when a metal atom becomes an ion it loses electron or it, 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 the loss of electron is oxidation given the options that that are there so a is it gains electrons and is oxidized b gains electrons and is reduced c loses electrons and is reduced or d loses electrons and is oxidized the answer would be d 33 some calcium carbonate was reacted with excess dilute hydrochloric acid the volume of carbon dioxide evolved was recorded and plotted against time which of the following graph represents this reaction again we have seen this and we know that as soon as once the product once the reactants start to deplete the the concentration of the product forms right so this one here would be the reactant and this would be the product in the case of carbon dioxide so it's a 34 potassium is a metal from this information only it may be deduced that potassium is soft is very reactive has a low melting point or D is a good conductor of electricity and 34 is D 35 an alloy is A a type of element a mixture of metals a compound of metals or the same as aluminum alloy is a mixture of metals 36 which of the following methods is used for the extraction of aluminum electrolysis of its molten oxide b the reduction of its oxide using coke c electrolysis of its aqueous chloride or d reduction of the oxide using carbon monoxide and it's a electrolysis of its molten oxide 37 which of the following statements explain why over time aluminum products do not deteriorate in air as do iron products Remember that aluminum will, would, will form a protective coating, aluminum oxide, that protects the, the metal. So the answer would be both metals form oxide coats, but the aluminum oxide prevents further reaction while the iron does not. So that is C. 38. Items 30, item 38 refers to the following sequence of reaction involving iron compounds where 1, 2, 3 and 4 represent the progress, progressive stages in the sequence. A suitable reagent that could be used at stage 4 is aqueous sodium hydroxide. Thirty-nine. Which of the following elements 
is an important constituent of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll consists of magnesium. 40. The existence of millions of organic compounds is due, is due primarily to the ability of carbon to form multiple bonds, that's true, ring structures, true, branched chains, that's true, so that is 1, 2, and 3, that's D. 41. Copper and aluminum are both good conductors of electricity, but aluminum is preferred to copper for overhead for over the head electrical cables because aluminum, in, aluminum is obtained in very high degree of purity. Aluminum is lighter and resistant to corrosion. C. Copper, a transition metal, forms a colored coating or D. Copper, a rapid, copper rapidly reacts with grease in the presence of air. So the answer is B. Aluminum is lighter and resistant to corrosion. 42. Which of the following aqueous solutions will produce a yellow precipitate with aqueous potassium iodide? And remember that from qualitative analysis, lead nitrate. 43. Which of the following outcomes is observed when excess ammonia, aqueous ammonia rather, is added to a solution of copper 2 sulfate? Again, the Aqueous ammonia added to the copper 2 sulfate would form a deep blue solution of the copper ammonium complex. 44. Hexane is an alkane with six carbon atoms per molecule. Which of the following is the formula for hexane? Hexane is C6H14. CnH2n plus 2. So let us write it out. The formula CnH2n plus 2. Xn is 6. 6 to 12 and 2, 14. So that is B. Item 45 refers to the following structures of two organic compounds I and II, whose molecular formula is C3H845. Compounds I and II are known as the isomers of C3H8O, isotopes of C3H8, condensed formula or the molecular formula. They are both isomers. 46. Which of the following metals will react the most vigorously with dilute acid? That's zinc, since it's the one higher up the reactivity series 47 which of the following about ethane is correct its structural formula is given as that the molecular formula is c2h4 the empirical formula is ch2 or the general formula is cnh2n plus 2 the answer is d item 48 refers to the fully displayed structural formula of compounds q r and S shown below. Which of 48, which of the following correctly identifies the homologous series to which each compound belongs? Q is an acid, R is an ester, and S is an alcohol. So we are looking for acid, ester, alcohol. That's D. 49. Which reaction involves the boiling of a fat or oil with aqueous sodium hydroxide, caustic soda? Fat is an ester and so esters undergo hydrolysis. And in this, and there are two types of hydrolysis that esters will, would undergo, will undergo acid hydrolysis or base hydrolysis. And so the answer would be A. Question 50. Which of the following is the fully displayed structural formula of 2-bromobutane? Two 2-bromobutane. Two B is out of it. D is out of it. And for A, 
the bromo group is on carbon 1. C, the bromo group is on carbon 2, so that's 2 bromo butane. Answer is C. 51. Which of the following statements are true of alkanes and alkenes? Both alkanes and alkenes burn in air to give carbon dioxide and water. 2. Alkenes undergo substitution reaction while alkenes undergo addition reaction. True. 3. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons while alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So that's 1, 2, and 3. D. 52. A solution has a pH of 1. This solution would be expected to react with zinc metal to produce hydrogen. 53. Which of the following compounds will react with ethanoic acid to form an ester? Acid react with alcohols to form esters. And this is C. 54. Which of the following equations represent the fermentation of sugars using glucose as the substrate? And the answer is A. 55. Ethene is described as being unsaturated. This means that A. The molecule has insufficient hydrogen atoms. B. The molecule contains at least one double bond. Or C. Carbon atoms in the molecule are very reactive and D. Carbon atoms in ethene are linked by single bonds and it's B. At least one double bond. 56. All members of a homologous series have similar densities, boiling points, chemical properties or physical properties. Belonging to the same homologous series, you will have similar chemical properties. 57. Which of the following compounds can decolorize potassium permanganate? Potassium permanganate is purple. So, alkenes react decolorize potassium permanganate to indicate to indicate its presence. So, if you know an alkene, if you want to know an alkene is present, add some potassium permanganate and it decolorizes it from purple to colorless. Fifty-eight. Which of the following is a natural source of hydrocarbons? And that's petroleum. Now mix up hydrocarb um, hydrocarbons which involve both alkenes and alkanes with natural gas. 59. Which of the following types of polymers may be derived from the monomers of the, of the type shown below? And from this you will get the polyamides, that is C. 60. Which of the following hydrocarbons is the major constituent of natural gas? That's methane. Alright. So we have come to the end of another video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for continuously supporting this channel. Remember to share and subscribe to the channel. See you real soon.